Why does the US spend so much on its military? So that the US can stay militarily dominant without any real challengers. We have a rabid fear of being invaded by Canada is why. Not from US. You could happily invert this question and suggest that the reason other countries don't spend so much on their defense is because the US does. The US, with its NATO treaties amongst others, has managed to surround itself with a whole bunch of protective layers. However, through those layers, it have bound itself with obligations to protect those other countries. So other countries, mine included, have reduced their defense expenditure on the assumption that they will be protected first by the global rule of law, and secondly by the military might of the US. So when you argue that the US expenditure is so high, compared to what, compared to whom, compared to when, most importantly, Australia was close to 4% of GDP in 1968. Ish. Down to 2% now. Food for thought. The defining incident that explains US military spending in the US is the Japanese attack on Hawaii. December 7, 1941. Which destroyed ships and aircraft. And President Roosevelt's speech the next day. For declaring war on Japan. In the speech, he commits the U.S. to building ships, thousands of aircraft, tanks, and so on, for the war effort. Translated, the U.S. goes to war by spending lots of money and showing up with lots of stuff. The sort of joke goes that a German panzer tank could easily destroy a U.S. Sherman tank. But the Americans show up with six tanks versus the one panzer during World War II. The US built 50 Kelvin Shermans, the Germans 8K Panzers, continuing the strategy of being prepared militarily by having lots of stuff, is today wildly costly, at noted in the question. The US military expenditure includes a few incredibly important services for civilians, like GPS, Space Track, and the Coast Guard. The military R&D budget also covers a lot of Dulu's scientific research like those Boston Dynamics robots. More broadly, the U.S. has focused on keeping the seas safe from pirates and foreign militaries, which is extremely cost-intensive but important for maintaining the open global economy. Note that Singapore has a similar military-to-GDP ratio. Despite its wealth and distance from conflict zones, it's expensive to keep the seas safe. And rich countries have more to lose if a hostile state starts using U-boat tactics again. It's the price they pay to be the world police. It's seen as a necessary expenditure to protect the interests of America. You need an army to preserve the empire. The U.S. currently dominant is the global order and economy. In order to preserve its status, it needs to be able to present a credible threat to Chollinger countries when all diplomatic efforts fail. There's no credible threat without strong armies. You don't even see half of it. Countries pay the USA to have military bases in their country. Law enforcement agencies in other countries pay to have our Air National Guard fly surveillance. The DoD is paid to have the USA Army train many other militaries around the world. The DoD also sells intelligence products and services to allies. The USA military is a business. 1. It's a massive jobs program. Point 2. Corporations and companies like Lockheed Martin and Raytheon lobby the government to spend a lot on upgrading and maintaining weapon systems. 3. The USA protects Europe and many other nations with their military, not just themselves. 4. There are huge black budget programs that are not tracked and the people who run these programs can spend money how they see fit with little to no oversight.
I can guarantee you a large portion of these funds are not being used appropriately. In other words they probably go more to lining a few individuals' pockets more than actually spending for the sake of U.S. defense. I'm sure there are lots more reasons. But these are the top contributors I could come up with. Everyone wants to talk smack on the U.S. till they're being invaded. Then they come begging for help. We are happy to help when we can. But really grinds our gears when other countries want to knock us on our unnecessary spending in pollution. Can't have your cake and eat it too. And we've enjoyed nearly complete territorial integrity ever since. People generally don't screw with us. At the end of World War II, the USA and the Soviet Union dominated the entire Earth. The two superpowers competed with each other for dominance by building vast militaries, each fearing that if they let themselves weaken, they would be defeated. Each sought to balance the other's gigantic military by building more and more technological warfighting marvels. Then the Soviet Union collapsed. The Soviet war machine, empire, and economy fell apart, but the US did not. It's still the same as it was. With a huge globe-spanning military and no other great power to challenge it. Another reason that isn't popular in to talk about is because some of our neighbors and other democracies in the world don't spend enough to adequately defend themselves. Take Canada for example. They have an excellent military but it's very small and Canada is huge. It would be difficult to defend if, say, a militarily competent version of Russia decided to attack. However, there's absolutely no way the USA would allow Canada to be conquered by a hostile nation. Same thing with Mexico, and many countries in Europe. The military complex is extremely well integrated into the US private business as well as all sorts of government institutions. It's a jobs machine internally and a way to generate income externally. Selling of weapons, military vehicles, submarines, airplanes and so on. Empires don't come cheap. Because we're the world superpower and want it to stay that way. We also have tons of allies that rely on us for military protection. Everyone here is saying for business and profits. And that's only a part of the equation. I guarantee you if the US military was way smaller, China would have invaded Taiwan already. And Russia would have invaded more than just Ukraine. There are obviously lots of reasons. But one I don't see is that it's basically a form of insurance. Having the superpower military isn't all that important and is largely a money suck. Until it is. At that point it's of the utmost importance. How much is it worth to have a military that essentially can't be defeated? Nukes mean we can have wars with no true victor. But the US simply will not experience large-scale military defeat. Long-term occupations like Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan are a different story. A lot of it is tied up with contracts. Like others have said, after WW2 we adopted the mindset of always being at war. So we signed these huge contracts with manufacturers. Why? For example, we developed and paid for the F-35. Even though our existing air forces are more than adequate, we're basically stuck under these contracts. Either they don't want to cancel, or some conflict arises where we need to renew them. The US wants to have the capability of fighting one two different fronts at once if need be. Heavily summarizing the words from my dad. Retired Army CSM. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.